I thought I saw a putty cat. I did. And he's right here. I promised you a putty cat. Now I'm going to show you how to make them. But I want to point out a couple of things first. Sylvester has a red nose. So we need to make the nose red. And this involves a, a, a little bit different twist that I'm going to show you. Hopefully it'll be easy for you to learn. And now I've done feet on, on this Sylvester like I've done on the Pink Panther and on Tigger, except in black. But when we make this creation, I'm going to show you a different way of doing the feet that's a little quicker, a little easier, and they're actually white then. The bottoms will be white because Sylvester actually has white feet, so you might keep that in mind too. He also has a white tip on his tail, and that's going to involve the same twist that we utilize on the nose. So without further ado, I'm going to set him aside and we'll start to make a new one, okay? Great. Oh, I should have told you to get a cold drink first because this one's going to take a while, okay? Let's make that first technical measurement a handful, about three and a half inches, followed by an inch, followed by another three and a half inches. Just lay that alongside measure, okay? I wrap the knot around there a couple times, then I like to go through the inside a couple times just to hold it, okay? Now we're going to ear twist this one inch glue, just side to side, oh, three or four half turns should be sufficient on that, okay? Now let's make a neck, this will be the back of his head, let's make a neck about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half bubble. You know, I forgot to tell you something. When we started out with this black 260, I had about three and a half inches uninflated, and that's plenty because we're done twisting it right now, and we still have a couple inches uninflated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the uninflated portion up to the base of the neck. I'm going to wrap that around there once, and I'm going to let the air out of this uninflated portion, and then tie it. I'll just tie a half knot. I'll just go around there once, just so it won't come untwisted. Then because I'm superstitious about balloons losing air, I'm going to just tie another knot in that and, and then we'll trim off the excess with our envelope opener, which you all should have one by now. Okay, now let's take this loop and we'll find the center of that. I'll flip it over here. We'll find the center of that and then we're going to twist that. So we end up with two sides. Okay, I'll show you. These will be the sides of Sylvester's body here, all right? Wow, we're doing great so far. Let's take a white 260, inflate it all but about three, three and a half inches. Now I'm going to squeeze all the air to that knot end, okay? Well, not all the air. I'm just going to squeeze as much air down there as I can get, okay? Now I've taken a red 260 and I've cut it in half to start so I didn't have to inflate as much. I've just inflated the last two inches of that. And this is going to be the nose. Tied the knot and then I trimmed off so I have about an inch and a half, two inches of balloon there uh, to work with. Now this is going to be that marriage twist I told you about. It's actually, it's like you might call it a tulip twist or an apple twist. But we're going to join two balloons together with that. So I'm going to take the uninflated portion of this red one, put it on the, the nozzle end of that white one, and then we're going to push it down inside the balloon about three inches. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the knot and the red balloon and twist them. And I'll push that knot up just a little bit in that white one, and that'll hold it. And this will be Sylvester's nose. Now we're going to fold the white balloon up and we're going to twist another length, the same as this first white one. And sometimes you got to take a couple of tries at that because this, this white portion is rather soft and so we got to be sure that we get it pretty close to the same length. And we did pretty good on that. So we're going to lay the white balloon down on top of those two and measure another section. Okay. And now we're going to roll these, these two over this one. Just going to roll it through, kind of like you're doing a simple bird body. So far, so good. I'm going to roll that through there again. Oh, 
Okay. I'm going to take the red and I'm going to fold it up. I guess that's the right time. I'm going to fold it in there and pull the white out a little bit so I kind of pinch it. So it holds it up there on top. It might pop out as we're twisting the rest, but if it does, we'll, we'll place it back in there again. Now I'm going to make a one inch bubble here on the back and I'm going to ear twist that. It's going to help hold the cheeks apart. We'll get the head all together. And that's what I'm going to... Uh, actually, I think what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to take a little bit uninflated there. I'm going to hold that up to the base of that ear twist. I'm just going to twist this around a few times to join that. Then we're going to divide this in half to make those two cheeks, okay? Let's find the center of that and see how we did. And that's pretty darn close. Now we're going to take these. These will be the cheeks, actually, and we're going to put those around the top of the neck. And you only have to pass them across once to, to lock them on there. And then we need to work the ear twist we made to the back of the head. I'll show you when I get it into position. We're not actually going to position, well, I, I'll try, but we still have to put eyes on it. And so if you see that, oops, you got your nose on upside down. And we're going to put the cheeks out flat like this, but it'll be a little easier to do that once we get the eyes on the front. Okay. So we'll do that now. You've got a real handful here to work with when you're making the eyes and putting them around that muzzle and those cheeks. And so this one's going to take you some uh, time to practice. Now I have another white one that's inflated way too much. I had it as a spare in case I popped the first one. But we're going to make the eyes out of this and then we'll just... Uh, release the air from the portion we don't need. So let's start by taking the knot and let's twist it around one of these cheeks right up by the base of the head there. Go around there a couple of times, that'll be enough to hold it. And then lay it, lay it down on the front, the, the front, this is the back of his head, lay it there on the front and then twist it so it comes just to the base of the top knot there. And then twist that around there just once. Okay, so now we have one eye made. So now let's make another one. We'll lay the white one down in there and measure it. And then we'll come around that cheek to hold it. Now I think I'm going to take the top of the head and twist it around just once to kind of lock those all on there. Kind of tighten it up a little. Now look, we're left with all this that we don't need. So we're going to Trim the end of that off with our envelope opener, let the air out of that. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go around uh, one of these cheeks a couple times. And I'm going to trim it a little bit, and then I'm going to tie a knot in it. I don't need to tie the knot, but like I said, I'm a little superstitious, and go to all this work, and you hate to have the air run out of one. Although, like I've mentioned in a couple of the other uh, balloons, that if you make a mistake on these big ones as you go along, a lot of times you can patch a piece in. So, let's say we had a cheek that deflated on us. We could, we could make a new cheek and put it in there, for instance, okay? So now I want you to take a good look at this. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit on the face so you can see how it all is when it's uh, put together because you're going to have to practice this one a little bit. Now I'm going to turn the head around so you can see the back as well, okay? Now here's that ear twist we made, and that helps hold these cheeks out flat. Because you look at pictures of Sylvester, and you'll see his cheeks are really, really big and poofy. There's only so much you can do with a balloon, but these are pretty big and poofy, okay? And now while we're at it, let's just take our black marker, and we'll put some simple eyes on them. And I think I'm going to draw a few whiskers, too. And I'll leave that up to you whether you want to add those or not. But I, I'll put a few whiskers on the sides there of his muzzle and make him a little more cat-like, I guess. Okay, let's see. I'm going to take another white 260 inflated, all but about three and a half inches. And that's, that, again, is more than we need. We'll take the knot in and twist it around the base of his neck. 
And I'll go and go through the body there a couple times so it's locked in there nice and tight. And then I'm going to hold the white down and alongside the two blacks that make the sides of his body and twist it. Whoops! Now I get to show you how we're going to patch that in there. First, I'm going to get this, the white one out of there. Boy, I hope that got your attention because it sure got mine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. I'm going to have to inflate another white balloon. As luck would have it, I just took these out of the refrigerator. And by the way, if you don't store your balloons in the refrigerator, that's the best place for them. They'll last longer that way. And now I've warmed it up a little bit. Let's inflate it. That should be plenty. By the way, if you're needing a, a balloon pump or in the market for a balloon pump, uh, we make them here at Funhouse Productions, our Huff Daddy balloon pumps. You can check those out on our website. I know I mentioned that to you earlier about the website, but we'd sure appreciate it if you'd go by and take a look at some of the fun stuff we do. Drop us a line. Let us know what you're up to. Okay, I've got the white one tied in at the base of the neck again. Let's see if we have better luck, okay? I'm going to lay it down along those two black ones. Twist that. And then we're going to roll it through the body. Let's go two or three times with that. You know, we, we don't want that coming, to, coming undone. And you know how the kids like to, like to untwist things sometimes just to see how they were made. Now, we don't need this portion of the white, so we'll just release the air from it. And then I'm going to tie that in a half knot just around one section of that body so it doesn't come undone. Yep, you guessed it. And then we're going to tie another knot in there too. So if you ever meet me down the road somewhere, you just ask me if I'm still superstitious about my balloons and I'll tell you, I am. <laughs> okay, there we got the two sides of his body here with the white, the white belly now. Well, we're coming along great on this one. You know, while I got it this far, I want to finish the, the head. I've taken a white 260 and inflated about four, four and a half inches and made it really soft, okay? And we're going to use this for his ears. So I'm just going to divide that in the center and we're going to put that right around this top knot. So I'm just going to work that into the top knot. And we'll point those up a little bit. Now, Sylvester actually has black ears with white centers. And if you figure out a good way of doing that, please let me know, okay? I'm sharing with you. You can share with me, all right? Great. Now, let's see. Let's grab a black one. A black 260. Inflated all but about half of an inch. And it has been burped, so it's still soft. I'm going to trim the knot off. You know what? I promised you I was going to show you how to do those legs a little bit different. So I'm going to let some more air out of that one. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. So, so I'd say let's, let's make it so it's about four or five inches uninflated when you do this one, if you do the legs this way. Now remember when the first one I showed you, the legs were done like we did on the Tigger and the Pink Panther, and they were all black. And so we'll take this black 260 now, and we'll all but inflate it all but about five inches. And let's find the center. That's pretty good. We'll lace that through the body here for the for the legs. Okay. Push that around a couple of times. Right, just a minute, I'm getting a lap full here. You know, I need another, I need another white one. Of course, if I inflated all of them I needed for this creation, I'd have a big mound here on the table. Now let's inflate this white one just a bit here. I think that's going to be plenty. That's oh, I'm going to say that's about 14 or 15 inches. I'd leave about half the balloon uninflated. Let's tie a knot. And let's bring the two ends together and tie another knot. Now if you have wild balloons uh, one, 
the legs are the same as I put on the Mini Mouse. And so, if you've got that DVD, you already know how to make these. See? So you're a step ahead of the rest of the people watching. Now, doesn't that make you feel good? All right, now we've got the loop, and now I'm just going to divide that in half, okay? That looks pretty darn good. And we're going to slip one of the legs into each, each side there. That's, that's pretty quick. That's pretty easy. And then the bottom of the legs are white. I know you can't see the whole balloon in here now, but that's okay. So actually, technically, the bottom of the legs or the feet are white, which would make it more correct. You do the legs however you want. Whichever way you like the best, that's the way you should do it. Now our cat's looking kind of naked here without any arms, so we better fix that. Let's see. I'm going to take a black 260 that's inflated all but about three, three and a half inches again. And again, we probably don't need quite that much, but we can adjust. Squeeze the air to the knot end, so that's full down there. And we're just going to leave the knot on this one. So let's see. Now first, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set the black one aside for a minute. I'm going to make the hands first. And if you got wild balloons, one, you already know how to make the hands because we're going to make them like we did on the Minnie Mouse, only just a little bit larger, okay? So we're going to trim the knot off that. And that's inflated about, well, 15 inches. About half the length of that balloon's inflated. Maybe not quite that much, and that's plenty. So let's take a one-inch bubble followed by another one inch bubble. Let's ear twist the second one. Okay, now let's make another one inch bubble. And let's ear twist that one. And let's make another one inch bubble. So you're gonna have four one inch bubbles on this. You're not gonna ear twist the first one, just for the last three. And on the third one, ear twist it, like say six or eight, eight times, get it good and tight because we're actually going to make another hand over here and we'll pop the one in between it. Okay, so twist about an inch and a half bubble to separate them and then another one inch bubble and ear twist this one inch bubble. And six or eight half turns on it because this is going to be where we separate them. Okay, another one inch bubble and ear twist it. And one more one inch bubble. And here's with it. You guys are doing great. You know, I got a lot of requests to do this wild balloons too. I've probably already told you this once before, but I can't say it enough. I appreciate all the positive comments I've gotten from the first DVD, and, and I was really excited that so many people wanted to see some more of the balloons I make, and I'm happy to share them. And hopefully we'll get to meet each other down the road sometime. That'd be wonderful. Okay, now we tied that off after the last one inch bubble. We're going to trim that. And now between the two groups of four one inch bubbles, we got that one and a half inch bubble. We're going to pop it now to separate the hands, okay? So there we have them. Really, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now let's take that black 260 that's inflated all but about three, three and a half inches. We've already squeezed the air towards the knot end, okay? So we're going to take the knot and wrap around one of these groups of four bubbles here on the white one, okay? Just wrap it around there a couple of times. It'll hold it on there. It doesn't take much, okay? Now let's, let's try to measure. I like to make the arm. This is a little taller creation, so... I think the arms ought to be at least down to the waist or so. That'd be fine. That looks pretty darn close. So we'll measure that up and twist. Okay, well, we're going to have that. Now we'll let the... Um, let me get this out of your way first. Now we'll let the remainder of the air out of that black one and tie it off. And now I'm going to let just a little bit more out soften it up some. Okay, because when we twist around the neck, we don't want it to pop. Now we'll tie our knot, 
And now I'm going to trim this, but I'm not going to trim it right at the knot. I'm going to leave myself about a half of an inch. Whoops. So I have something here to wrap around the second hand. Believe me, I've trimmed them right at the knot before then realized my mistake. <laughs> you can still do it, but it's a little harder. And then we'll wrap this around the, the white bubbles a couple of times. So get them all locked together. Okay, now we got to find the, the middle of that again. So we'll fold them down. That's pretty darn close. Okay, come here, buddy. So we'll wrap this around the base of the neck. Now let's see here. I'll give the arms just a little bit of a curve up. I do that on most of them. I'm sure you figured that out by now. Let's see. Oh, hey, he doesn't have a tail, does he? Well, we're going to fix you up, buddy. Don't you worry. I have another black 260 inflated all but about, oh, half of an inch there, okay? And we might have to release a little bit more air. We'll see. Now, remember how we did the nose with that marriage twist I showed you? You know, the tulip or apple twist with two balloons, though. So I've taken the end of a white 260 and inflated oh, two and a half inches of it and tied it off and left myself an inch, inch and a half there, uninflated. I'm going to take that and put it on the knot, just like we did on the nose. And I'm going to burn that in there just a couple of inches. Get your finger back out while you're holding the white balloon and the knot inside and then twist that black balloon and then push the knot back up in there just a little bit. Doesn't take much to hold it. And then we have a white tip on the tail, okay? But the cat tail is really not good straight. So let's fold it up here. And do you remember how we get that the whole little shape? We just heat up those those curves on that balloon a little bit with our hand, or you could rub it on your outfit a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot to give it a little shape. Now I'm going to pinch just about a half inch bubble, maybe even a little smaller, but I got good and lucky on that one. And now we're going to take this little bubble and I'm going to run it between the two black ones that's on the side of his body. I'm just going to go around one of those sides once and I'll position that little bubble right here in between the two blacks and the white at the base. Okay? And then I'll hold his tail up. And then we have the tail with the white tip, the white down there by his feet, and the red nose. Now let me know what you think about this one when you get them done, okay? Thanks for watching.